I am Tammy Beilstein. Welcome to Tammy's Window on Calaveras. I am here today with one of my really good friends, a very smart lady, very kind, obviously. Why would we be friends? <laughs> She's amazing. Her name is Laurel Jollop, and she is an insurance broker. And she's going to talk to us today about Medicare, which I know nothing about. So be ready for very basic, simple questions. <laughs> like, what is it? <laughs> Hi, Laurel. Thank you for being here. You bet. Thanks I'm glad for having you came me. to to help explain to us what mm -hmm. it is. Like I seriously, I wonder th the difference between Medicare, Medicaid, Medi-Cal. All these things confuse me. Great. Okay. Perfect start. Perfect Tell start. us what it is. A lot of people get <laughs> confused. Okay. So Medicaid is uh, a federal funded program for low income. Okay. Medi-Cal is Medicaid's version for California. Okay. Okay. They're the same thing? They are Medi-Cal and Medicaid are the same thing. Okay. Medicare is completely different. Okay. Okay. So Medicare is, uh, you know, when your whole life you've been paying your taxes, you've been paying mm -hmm. into Social Security, well, part of the benefit that you're paying into is Medicare. Right. And so that takes care of you when you're older. Mm -hmm. So basically when you're 65... And you have uh, Medicare, you get Medicare Part A and Part B. Some people with certain disabilities that are under 65 also qualify for Medicare. Okay. That is if you have a kidney a disability. failures or disease. Oh. Not necessarily just kidney, but, it's, okay. but a lot of uh, permanent disability. Okay. If someone's on Social Security disability income, okay. if they've gotten that for a couple of years, then they qualify 25 months later for Medicare. Okay. So the so. other is... There's no age requirement. It's only f income. Medicaid, yes, Medicaid, that's correct. Only an income requirement. Yeah. Uh, you cannot go above yeah, a certain, certain amount. levels, yeah. Medicare is the age requirement, but no, it doesn't matter what income you have? Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. As long as you've worked 40 quarters in 40 this country. Quarters. Oh, God, that's a 10 math. years. Okay, thank you. 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> Quarters. <laughs> so 10 years, if you've worked 10 years of your life uh -huh. and you've paid into the Social Security system, then uh -huh. you qualify for Medicare Part A and Part B. Okay. Okay. Now this A and B talk. Okay. So Part <laughs> A is hospitals uh -huh. and then a few other things, like hospice and among other things. And Part B is doctors and then a few other things. Okay. Okay. Medicare Part A and Part B are covered 80%. They both have deductibles mm -hmm. and, and co-pays, but the object of the game is to find something that works with your Medicare to get it to where you have 100% coverage. Why are they separate? Why is there an A and a B? That's a great question, and I don't know that answer. Hmm. Okay. But you can buy both A and B? So part A, if you've worked 40 quarters, uh -huh. is free. Oh, okay. Okay. If you haven't worked 40 quarters and if someone comes over here and uh, they didn't work the whole 10 years but they want to get Medicare, they can pay extra for it or they can continue working until they okay. completed their 40 quarters. So Part A for the, for the most common person, okay, for mm -hmm. those of us who've worked 10 years or longer, right. uh, Part A is free. And then Part B this year is $134, and that's per month. Wow, okay. And so you're going to pay for that in addition to what you've paid for those 10 years. Okay. Okay. But if you don't have an income, that's a lot of money. Right. Right. And mm -hmm. so people who are just on Social Security, mm -hmm. they definitely would get the A and the B. Right. Because that's 80% of your okay. medical bills paid for. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, there are Medicare Advantage plans that you can work alongside Medicare or a Medigap plan that you can work alongside Medicare I've that covers the other 20%. Heard of Medigap. Yeah. And so kind of a gap insurance that covers after the 80 and before the 100. So if Medicare covers 80%, uh -huh. then this Medigap plan or Plan F, let's say, there's, there's several, but Plan F covers the most of that gap. Okay. So if you had a Plan F and Medicare, then you'd be covered 100% for hospital and doctors. And Plan F is the same price for everyone, or does that depend on Great your question. income? That's a really or... good question. It is not income contingent. Okay. It is based on, it's in California, it's based on your age and your zip code. 
Why does that matter? It just does. Cost of living, uh, oh. population, how many people are there. And so, well, you know what worries me about the zip code in our area? We have a tough time finding doctors. We do. We do. It doesn't mean your doctor has to be there. It just means where do you oh. reside. Okay. You can go to a doctor in Tuolumne or Amador. Okay. Uh, but you live in Calaveras, and so that's the, the zip code that we would use for you. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Okay. And then there's Medicare Advantage plans. If you didn't want to get, get a Medigap plan, you can get a Medicare Advantage plan. Those are county-driven. And mm -hmm. so that means that Amador has one for 2017. Amador has one. Calaveras has one for 2017 and 18. And Tuolumne has none. They don't have any Medicare Advantage plans. Why is so that? So they only have a Medigap plan as an option. I don't know. So every county has a choice? Every county has a choice. San Joaquin County has seven. Stanislaus has 11. Who decides that? Uh, federal entities, mostly. But private insurance companies are the ones who run them. Do most people know that this stuff goes on? Because I had no idea. <laughs> well, you become much more interested when you're 64. I bet. Yes, I bet you, you know, do. A lot of people, wow. when they're 60, they call me and they go, okay, I, I got a few years. What do I do? Oh, my god! And I say absolutely nothing until you're 64. Yeah. And then you start paying attention because everything changes. Oh, my gosh. So once, you know, probably jumping way ahead, but once people set themselves up at 65, mm -hmm. are they set then until? You can change. And, and yes, they're set for the most part. Um, there are things that you can change every year depending on your needs. For example, there's also something called a Part D, which is the drug plan. So your drugs are not included in no, your, oh no, my god. Drugs are not included in the Medigap plan, nor are they included in the A and B, because it's D. Why not? If you're going to the doctor, <laughs> you need your prescriptions, right? I know. And those are run by, by uh, independent insurance companies. And <clears throat> They're administered by, to, you know, with physicians and, and pharmacies, and, and they change every year. Now, here's the biggest deal, though. Part D, <clears throat> excuse me, Part D, there's a penalty. It's a voluntary plan, but yeah. there's a penalty if you don't get it. <laughs> voluntary plan that you're penalized if you don't have. No way. Mm -hmm. I talked to someone yesterday. Son found out that mom, who's 82 has never had a drug plan, and now mom needs one. And I can, I can sign up mom up for one after October 15th, because that's their annual election period, okay. and it won't start until January 1st, but she's gonna pay over $40 a month more for the rest of her life because she didn't have it Oh, no. In 2006, or 2006, when Part D was first implemented. So she's punished. She's punished. For the rest of her life. So the son was not happy. And he says, why that didn't I know right. this? And so the answer is, the, the, that Part D penalty information is in the book that people get every year. It's called Medicare and You. And every okay. year they get a new one. Whether or not they open it is another question. My mom is the only one I know that's read it. <laughs> it's true. Um, but I say hold on to it. Read it. Yeah. I think it's page 90 of, the, of this year's book that talks about the penalty. Page 90? Page 90. Okay, I was hoping it was like a little 10-page Oh, no, leaflet. it's a big book. Oh, Well, it's, a, it's probably 150 pages. No wonder people don't read it. Right. Right. It's, it's, <sighs> it's kind of overwhelming and kind of daunting, and, and a lot of people go, I don't understand this. And so... What I do... And when you're 65, you need yeah. the, the type to be this big. Yeah, and, and it, by law, it has to be a 12 font and or oh, larger. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Who so, do I talk to about this? Is it, that is so wrong. Thank you for asking. <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> I mean, the whole, the whole setup know, is wrong. I know. I know. <laughs> no, truthfully, what yeah. I tell folks is I don't speak Spanish. I speak yeah. Medicare because it's a foreign language. <laughs> yeah, it sounds and, and, like and it. And it truly is. Uh, it just, you know, people don't know what they don't know. You know, they don't want to pay a penalty. They don't want to be stuck with something. Right. Um, well, it so, sounds like stuff you don't even want to start to know. It is just That's why I say call me when you're 64 and a half. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Unless you're you taking this, care of your parents. They send you this book when you turn 64? Every year you get a new book. 
Yes. Starting at 64. Starting at 65 when you when you become eligible for Medicare. God. Yeah. I'm not looking forward to that. You have my number. <laughs> that is so. Yes. It's 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 tough. It's it's real tough because some of these folks are older. Yeah. In fact, my my kind of joke is, you know, the the one who gets most upset about this is the 65 year old. They go, this is ridiculous. You know, who reads this stuff? Yeah. And I say it's the same information when you're 88. That's crazy. And that's what's hard, is when that person, who might have some challenges, yeah, are, is trying to understand what their rights are, what the penalties are, what the deadlines are. Well, and they're not going to get themselves out of the house and drive to see you right. Right. to figure all this stuff out. Right. That doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. I take care of a lot of people on the phone. Yeah. Do some phone appointments. I go see people, you know. Oh, man. Laurel, I didn't know all this goes on. That kind of yeah. ticks me off. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. It is. Okay, so someone turns 65. They get this stupid book in the mail. <laughs> they have to figure out what they need. Yeah. They're going to need... The Part D, because you're going to get medications. Mm -hmm. You have to have the Medicare, for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. The A and the B, mm -hmm. probably. Mm -hmm. They call you to make an appointment. Right. Where You're in Valley Springs? I'm in Valley office? Springs. Okay. Yeah. Are there a lot of people who do what you do? Not a whole lot in Calaveras. Uh, there's a few. Uh, more in Amador and Tuolumne. Okay. I take care of... I'm licensed for the state of California and Nevada and Arizona. But okay. uh, California keeps me busy. Yeah. Um, I take. I have a lot of people in the valley, as well as the foothills. All right. And so there, there are. You know, there are many of us in the in the city, yeah. and in the valley. Uh, but in the foothills, there's, there aren't as many of us. Are there many people at sixty five who still have insurance through an employer? When yes. you retire, this probably is a really stupid question, but I've never thought of it. When you retire. Can you keep your insurance from your employer? So that's Can you a pay? great question. It keep depends paying? on the employer. Okay. So I have uh, uh, employees from a few different school districts up here that um, the, some school districts say even though you turn 65 and you become mm -hmm. eligible for Medicare, you aren't able to take it while you're employed, while you're working full time. Okay. And so that means they're required to stay on their plan. Mm -hmm. And that's okay with Medicare as long as you have credible coverage. There's a mm -hmm. lot of laws and a lot of restrictions and rules. And so you just have to pay attention. And so the first thing I do is say, call your HR department. Okay. It's up to the employer as to what their rules are. Hmm. Oftentimes, when, once you turn 65 and you're eligible for Medicare, some employers say, well, you can stay on, but, you know, your premium just doubled. Oh. Because they don't want you on their plan because you're expensive. Oh. Their risk goes up when you get older. Well, Some do, that, not all. Okay, I thought of that. Okay. But now, truthfully, I know people who have spent $1,000 a month on their employer coverage thinking they're, they're getting a benefit because they mm -hmm. earned it. And, it. and it was fantastic until mm -hmm. they turned 65. And then okay. it goes way up, and they have no idea that they can go to Medicare and pay $300 a month mm -hmm. to get 100% coverage. And the doctors around here, will they take that? Great question. Medicare. So... If, so, 93% of doctors nationwide take Medicare. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I think more of them probably up here than, than the 93% national now, average. Now, why did I think that they don't? Or am I thinking of the Medi-Cal? Medi-Cal, yes. Do they not take Medi-Cal? Many don't take Medi-Cal. Okay, that's what, I'm, that's what I've also, heard then, but they take Medi-Cal. a lot of doctors up here don't take Covered California, which is the other part. Is Wait actually a minute. under 65. What's the difference between? Oh my God! So okay, so Covered <laughs> California is in health insurance for someone who's under sixty-five and not on Medicare. Okay. So you and I, if we don't have employer plans, uh -huh. we have individual plan, and that can go through Covered California. Okay. And the question is whether or not there's a benefit there. If if your income is low enough mm -hmm. and household size is such that you qualify for some premium assistance, which is not Medi-Cal. That's why you, you get confused because it's easily understood, yeah. misunderstood. Then you can take a covered California plan between November 1 and January 31 okay. only. Okay. So it's the in-between, <coughs> the low-income 
It's the middle. The, correct. And then the, okay. So Medi-Cal is up to a certain number mm -hmm. financially. Mm -hmm. And then you have covered California. Okay. Until you're 65. Okay. And then you go to Medicare. Do you like your job? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I do. I help a lot of people. <laughs> oh, my God. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm so stressed out. You were there. Okay. Well, actually, and so it's funny that you say that. Instead of you stressing out, what's important is to just know who to call. Seriously. And if it's yeah. not me, call someone that you trust that, that takes care of, you know, this kind of insurance, whatever you need. Okay. Just know their phone number. That's all you need to know. So tell us about your, your education. Um, I, to I trust you totally. These people, they don't know you. Tell them why they would trust you. How do, okay. how do you keep up on all this stupid stuff? <laughs> Um, All this crazy, yeah, crazy stuff. It's a full time stuff. job. Uh -huh. You know that is. It, you know that, that's. It's a full time job. Um, I certify with uh, federal government as well as independent insurance agencies every year wow. for all of the changes. Uh, now, let me let me say a disclaimer, if you don't mind. I do not work for Medicare. I'm okay. not employed by Medicare. Um, and nor am I employed by the federal government. I'm okay. an independent, independent insurance broker, mm -hmm. and I am contracted with Blue Cross and AARP and United Healthcare and Blue Shield and HealthNet and Aetna and, and on and on and on. But you have to prove to them that you know what you're doing, yes. and that you understand. Yeah. Oh yeah, they want to see my licenses, my right. certifications every year. Okay. Yes, and so every year I uh, become educated again. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, as well as, you know, every other year for the state of California, you know, we get to redo our licenses. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. But I do like it. You, you're so weird. <laughs> I, know, I, I love you. Weird. This is true. I am weird. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. So what else should we know about this Medicare coverage, about the insurances? What, what are the things that people most are most commonly confused about. Okay. Great question. I'm so glad you asked that. So number one, um, when, if you're 64 and a half and you're not sure if you're going to be, be receiving the, your Medicare card or Social Security, then call Social Security and make an appointment with them. You can do it online, but to me it's important enough to what you want to go to the office and make an appointment. Okay. Do we have an office here in Calaveras? Uh, no. No, there's one in Lodi and there's one in uh, Sonora. Okay. Okay. Um, so make sure you know what you qualify for. That's the, that's the first big deal. The second big deal is do not turn down Part B if you have covered California, for example. A lot of people... Uh, are, were confused in the beginning of Covered California, which I also take care of with, for people under 65. Okay. If Oftentimes someone, well, I've got a, a guy who, uh, he turned 65, he liked his Covered California plan. He says, I'm staying here. I don't want my Medicare. Hmm. Well, it's against the law. Oh. He, can't, he doesn't qualify for Covered California because he's eligible for Medicare. Oh, okay. But he didn't know. Right. And... And now getting them back into Part B is, you know, takes an act of Congress. In fact, so many people goofed in that one that Medicare actually gave them an extended period of time to fix that, okay. whether or not they do, because, again, they like the lower premiums if they're lower income, not Medi-Cal eligible, right. but lower income. Um, so that's a big mm. deal to know not to turn down Part B unless you have credible coverage, which is from your employer more than anything else. Okay. Um, another big deal is to know that there is a Part D penalty if you right. if you if you don't have a drug plan and you're eligible for one, you and, and you don't have yeah, if you don't have credible coverage, then more than likely you're going to incur a Part D penalty, which you'll pay for the rest of your life. That's not right. It's true. That's so wrong. Mm -hmm. Finally, okay. uh, on the covered California side or under 65 side, people need to know, you know, if they don't want to pay their premiums, they say, well, I'll just cancel my insurance. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't know that they, A, can't get insurance again until November 1st. Mm -hmm. And so you can't just get it any time. And so between November 1st and January 31st is the only time of the year that you can 
add health insurance for someone who's under 65. Okay. Okay. Um, as well, you're going to be penalized for the months that you didn't have it. Okay. And then finally, if you have an emergency room visit, the average cost of that is 15 grand. But isn't it true that they don't turn anybody away? They don't turn you away. That doesn't mean they don't bill you. You get to pay for it. But if you don't have the money... They're not going to turn your, you away. They're going to take care of you medically, and yeah. then they'll send you a bill, which okay. is not subject to bankruptcy laws. Oh. Medical bills are not. Okay, so some of the new things that I remember changing not all that, uh, all that long ago... Kids being on the um, insurance plans mm -hmm. until they're 26, mm -hmm. is that going to it's hang still the same for around now. for a while? Mm -hmm. Okay. What other changes do you see coming? Or is, it, is that going to be around for a while? Do you see that changing? Um, well, the bigger question is Affordable Care Act going to be around for a while. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Congress is talking about, and there's a lot of, you know, controversy over whether or not we're going to eventually go to a single-payer system. We meaning the state of California and or we being the, the, the United States. Mm -hmm. If we go to a single-payer system, it all changes. And what, I, what people don't realize is if we do go to a single-payer system, Medicare is included in that. Okay. So a lot of people who think, well, wait a minute, I paid my taxes, I paid into the Social Security system, it's my money. Mm -hmm. If we go to a single payer, that Medicare money goes to a single payer. Ooh. That's who's going to help pay for it. And a lot of people don't, they, all, they think that Medicare is excluded from that yeah. single payer. Yeah. But it's Medicaid or okay. Medi-Cal. It's all of Affordable Care Act. It's all employer plans. Wow. And Medicare. Single I payer. I think I one. assumed it was separate also. Right. So a lot of huh. people don't know. Right. That means one for everyone. Wow, we. So it makes more sense than it, wouldn't it make more sense for every state to come up with their own? Is that what do you do you think that or what do you, how do you feel? Or is that something you should even Whether say? it's state or federal, it's out of your control. Yeah. If it's a single payer. Mhm. Mm a lot of people are for it because they feel that everybody would have access to the same care, level of care, which I believe that they do now. Mhm. Mm um some people get it more than others, or they're more persistent about right. it than others. It's a tough one. It's, it's, a, it's a real tough answer. But I know that a lot of people on Medicare are not going to be happy with that. Because mm. they earned it. Yeah. It's theirs. Yeah. No one's taking away their Social Security income, but their right. Medicare benefit, of which they also paid. See, I guess because our family um, has always had insurance through employers and mm -hmm. uh, I, I have had family members who have been on Medi-Cal. I've mm -hmm. never talked with them about it really. I don't know the details of how it worked or how they felt mm -hmm. about it mm -hmm. but I never saw much of an issue with the way things used to be Right, and I kind of liked it yeah. <laughs> for me yeah. and on my family. Yeah. It worked. It seemed to work out just mm -hmm. fine the way things used to be. Yeah. So it makes me nervous. Yeah. Change makes me nervous. Yeah. But, um, but I also don't understand a lot of, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of what is being talked about. It goes I over my head, you know. A lot of people, uh, one, of the, one of the groups of people that I think are getting the short end of the stick mm -hmm. are providers. Mm. They're doctors. Yeah, right. They're leaving. They're going yeah. into research. They're changing yeah. into, you know, doing something else because... Right now, Affordable Care Act tells them how much they're going to get paid. Yeah. Or Medicare tells them how much they're going to get paid. Yeah. You're so right. Two of my brothers-in-law mm -hmm. are doctors, and they, um, I would say they are not encouraging the next generations right. to go into that And so field. if providers are hard to find now, yeah. how is it going to be in 20 years? Right. Scary. Right. That's more of a... Concern. A huh? concern on You're a right. personal basis, you know, yeah. on an individual basis. Absolutely. You're so right. Mm -hmm. hmm. So we have like five minutes left. I want to make sure that we say, what is your phone number? It's 209-786-2021. Okay. And uh, your 
business address? Is that something? I have a website. Okay. Uh, and that's mylifemattersnow.com. Oh, I like that. The name of my company is Life Matters. Insurance. Life Matters. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that you go around to, well, every place you can to speak about this, mm -hmm. this sort of thing, mm -hmm. which I love. It is so important. Okay. And I got to tell you, if you find out that Laurel is going to be speaking anywhere near you, go see her because um, I joke that the, <laughs> the things she's talking about are over my head. They are because I, I just, ugh, I can't stand math and and. All of this stuff is just, I'm not ready for it yet. I don't need to be ready for it yet, right. so I kind of just sort of pay attention to it. But it stresses me out. And But Laurel is entertaining to listen to. And it's, <laughs> if you're going to have to listen to this sort of talk, um, you want to hear it from Laurel. <laughs> because if you do keep our attention. When you do speak someplace, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do listen to you. And you do make sense. You don't talk down to anybody. Right. But... Like I said, this stuff is like, whoo, so over my head. But I do understand you when you talk with, with me. And I know that all of, all of these well, people would really understand you, too. Well, I really try to slow down my, I mean, I, I'm a fast talker. You just are. Like, you know, yeah. And, um, you, and you move, too, when you're, when you're not sitting do, down. Yeah. yeah, you're on yeah, the move. Yeah, I'm yeah. going. <laughs> uh, however, I, I also know where a 75-year-old is. Yeah. And they're going, whoa. You know, yeah. And so I, I really try to... Uh, not talk down to them by any means, uh, but I will slow down a little bit, quite a bit actually, yeah. because it's just a language that they're not used to. Right. I'm going to Italy next year, and I'm going to be petrified of speaking a different language, not knowing what they're saying, uh -huh. and I'm going to need them, even though I'm going to study the language, Right. I'm going to need them to speak real slowly Right. because right. I'm just learning, and that's yeah. how I feel about how the person on the other side of the yeah. table is. You is are so good at me. that. You're so good well, at that. You. you understand who you're speaking with. I and, try. Yeah, and yeah. you relate to that person. You're really great at that. I try. You, yeah, you're great. So if I were um, needing somebody like you, I would trust you 100%. Mm -hmm. And and I would seriously encourage any of you to go and call Laurel. Um, and if she's not near you, I still would call Laurel and ask her who she might recommend you to go yeah. talk to in your area yeah. because... Um, uh, because you're, you're just fantastic, well, and I know you. you know what you're talking about. Thank you. Yeah. I try. I try. Yeah, you're great. One thing that makes me different mm -hmm. is oh, I There's a lot the of things that make you yeah, different. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> I answer the phone. Yeah. I return calls. Yeah. I, re I answer emails. Mm -hmm. You do. You care. I, you, I mean, I do. You absolutely care about people. You're fantastic. Uh, we are... Out of time. Can you believe that was a half believe hour? believe it. That was so fast. I know. We need to do this again because you still have so much to teach us. We will, like, pick one yeah. thing to talk about, sure. and we'll stick with it, and sure. we'll go, like, down the list so we can explain go. to everybody what go. they need to know. We'll have the regular you. series. Thank you. Ryan, You're welcome. for being here. I hope you guys got something out of that because Laurel's fantastic. Please call her and find out all you need to know. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next time on Tammy's Window on Calaveras.